Hey guys, you're watching the EJ Tech Show. I'm Soham and this is my review of the OnePlus Watch Cobalt Limited Edition wearable. It was announced alongside the original OnePlus Watch, but its launch has been held until now because it's a more exclusive premium device. Do stay tuned till the end of the video to see what I really think of it. And if you do enjoy the content, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the Editor G channel for more tech reviews. Now, before I begin, I would like to point out that this video is going to mostly deal with everything that OnePlus has improved on the OnePlus Watch since we first saw it and my personal experience in my time spent with the OnePlus Watch Cobalt Limited Edition. Since everything is identical between the two watches under the hood, if you want to check out our OnePlus Watch review, it'll be linked in the description. The biggest difference between the old OnePlus watch and this new Cobalt Limited Edition is the design and more importantly the finishing. While the last watch had a frame made of stainless steel, this uses Cobalt alloy, which OnePlus says is twice as hard and more corrosion resistant than regular stainless steel. It's got a beautiful golden colour to it with just the slightest hint of rose in it and it certainly helps the device look more premium than the first one. The dial is still fairly large at 46mm, so if you're not a fan of large watch faces, this may look out of place on your wrist. However, that means you get more real estate on its vibrant screen. The screen is also protected by specially treated sapphire glass this time, making it much more durable than the screen we saw on the previous model. OnePlus claims that it can withstand forces of up to 9 on the Mohs scale, which is quite impressive for a wearable at this price point. The rear of the watch, the bit that holds the sensors and charging pins, is still plastic, but since it's out of reach, I don't think it matters much what it's made out of. There's two buttons on the side, one of which has the OnePlus logo etched into it. The watch strap is connected using a spring mechanism, which makes changing straps fairly straightforward. This is a good thing because the vegan leather watch strap, as good as it looks, is not the most comfortable, at least initially. It does take a while to secure the correct fit on the wrist since there is a bit of play in the material used to make the strap. Also, when secured tightly, the metal butterfly clasp tends to dig into the skin, so this strap won't be the most comfortable to wear to bed. However, the included black watch strap is very comfortable, which is what I shifted to when I wanted to get in a quick workout and take the watch to bed for sleep tracking. Even with this black strap, the watch looks quite premium, thanks to the cobalt alloy finish. The latest Cobalt Edition also comes with a new update for the OnePlus Watch, bringing a whole host of features that were promised at launch. So now, on both the regular watch and the Cobalt Edition, you have things like an always-on display, even more watch faces, and over 100 workout modes. The always-on display turns on either when you flick your wrist away from yourself or when the screen timeout expires. There's four AOD designs on offer two digital and two analog, although the analog ones aren't very visible due to how thin the watch hands are, so I stuck with the digital AOD for the duration of my usage. An always-on display is a good feature to have on a smartwatch and it took years for Apple to implement it, but it does suck into the battery life. While turning on the setting, OnePlus does warn that it will reduce overall battery life by around half. The original OnePlus watch had quite a few watch faces at launch, but more have been added with the new update, which is good because there's still no complications or support for third-party watch faces. However, the workout modes are plenty and cover everything from parkour to pregnancy yoga. Again, if you are planning to work out with the watch and testing its IP68 rating, you're better off using the rubberish black watch strap rather than the vegan leather one. Battery life on the OnePlus watch was already impressive and with the Cobalt Edition getting the same 420mAh unit, it's still just as great. In my usage, even after a whole day of checking notifications, checking the time, using the AOD and getting in a workout, the watch barely lost 15% of its battery. Overall, it should still provide around a week's worth of battery life, even with the always-on display enabled. For charging, it takes the same time as the previous watch, just 20 minutes on the charger adds 50% of juice, and it also uses the same magnetic charger with BOGO pins. For a price tag of 19,999 rupees, the OnePlus Watch Cobalt Limited Edition may seem overpriced to many, but it does have two main things that matter on a limited edition product, it's premium and it's exclusive. 
The cobalt alloy finish and the overall design make it stand apart from every other fitness band and smartwatch out there at this price point. And for someone making the transition from a traditional watch who's looking for familiarity in design and function, this is a good option. Now don't go away just yet because up next is Deepith with his review of the new Samsung Galaxy A22. This is the Samsung Galaxy A22. It costs Rs 18,499 and it's the latest entrant in the Galaxy A series. The Samsung Galaxy A12, A32, A52 and A72 were launched earlier. Now this gets a 5000 mAh battery, a quad rear camera setup and a Helio G80 processor. But are these features enough to make it a compelling buy in the sub 20,000 segment? Hi guys, I'm Deepit and today I'm going to be talking about my experience with the Samsung Galaxy A22. But before I continue with this video, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. The all plastic body of this phone feels quite firm. Samsung have sent us the black color which does look quite sleek but I'm also a huge fan of the other mint color option. The glossy black back is a fingerprint magnet. A TPU case would have been appreciated but Samsung has not bundled one in the box here. Now this has a completely flat screen in back with slightly rounded edges. The 6.4 inch screen and the 186 grams of weight make one handed use quite easy. The phone feels comfortable to hold. The phone has an infinity U or a teardrop front camera cutout. I would have preferred a punch hole design but this isn't too obtrusive and fairly small as far as teardrop notches go. The quad camera module on the back doesn't protrude much from the frame and blends well with the phone's design language. Coming to the display, this is a 6.4 inch HD plus AMOLED display with a 90Hz refresh rate. Now let's get the elephant in the room out of the way first. This is an HD plus display which means it has a 720p resolution more or less. Now how much this affects you is going to depend a lot on what you care about. Some people cannot tell the difference between HD plus and full HD plus at all, while for some people it may be a bigger issue. Although HD plus, this is still a Samsung AMOLED display, which means it is extremely vibrant, very bright and has great colors for consuming content. The 90Hz refresh rate is very smooth and a huge benefit. Scrolling around the UI and even using apps like Twitter or Instagram presents a very smooth experience. Now coming to the camera, this has a quad rear camera setup with a 48 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide, a 2 megapixel macro camera and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. The 48 megapixel rear camera performs great. By default, it puts out 12 megapixel photos. The phone offers optical image stabilization or OIS which is a huge feature at this price range. OIS compensates for small jitters in your hands when you're clicking to give stable shots and to remove blur. Phones that cost more than double the price of this phone sometimes do not come with OIS. If you're a fan of the Samsung look, which I am, and how Samsung processes colors, you will be very happy with the camera performance. There is some color shift with the 8 megapixel ultra wide, but it's nothing too terrible. The 123 degree field of view means it gets quite wide and will make for some great landscape shots or group photos. It does capture slightly less detail than the wide camera, but nothing that sticks out too much unless you zoom really into the photo, which you're not going to be doing much with an ultra wide. There's also a 2 megapixel macro camera. Now it can be a little difficult to get the appropriate amount of focus with this camera and the detail is not too amazing, but for what it is, it does produce some decent shots. The OIS in the main camera also helps with low light performance. While you do need to keep your hands a little stable, you don't need a tripod to get great low light shots. In terms of video, this shoots 1080p and 720p video at 30fps. Colors are consistent with video and quality is quite good. Again, the OIS means that there are no little jitters when recording videos, even if your hands aren't the most stable. Mine are definitely not, but pans and small movements came out looking just fine. The Galaxy A22 packs a 13 megapixel front camera. The front camera also carries your trademark Samsung look and clarity is quite good for selfies. In bright sunlight, it can have some troubles activating HDR, but when it works, it can make even extremely brightly lit backgrounds visible. This also shoots 1080p and 720p video at 30fps and clarity is great for video calls as well. The Galaxy A22 offers a Helio G80 chipset, which is common for this price range. The UI performance is very smooth, you won't notice any slowdowns or jitters in day-to-day -day activities. Gaming performance is surprisingly good partly I think because of the HD plus screen, but Battlegrounds Mobile India runs very well on this phone and plays very smoothly at HD settings on the high frame rate option. 
6GB of RAM is adequate to run anything on Android as of today and it's great to see 128GB of storage as the base option. You can also expand the storage up to 1TB through the micro SD card slot. The phone runs One UI 3.1 Core based on the latest Android 11. Not much remains to be said about One UI. It's extremely polished, fast, good looking and full of features. It's my personal favourite Android skin and remains a delight to use on this phone. There is some preloaded bloatware, but most third-party apps can be completely uninstalled so it isn't too big of a deal. Some first-party apps also do send push notifications but these are also easily turned off. The Galaxy A22 sports a now ubiquitous USB Type-C port for charging and data transfer. It also has a 3.5mm headphone jack which is common in this segment but it's always great to see. There's a single bottom firing speaker that gets reasonably loud. This phone has a side mounted fingerprint scanner which I love. I maintain that physical fingerprint scanners are much faster and more accurate than in-screen ones so this is fantastic. The phone packs a considerably sized 5000mAh battery and the HD Plus screen and the efficient processor means it goes a long way. It can do over 15 hours of video playback and have some battery to spare at the end, so it should last you about a day and a half with regular usage with no issues. As for charging performance, the bundled 15W charger charges the phone from 0 to around 50% in about 50 minutes. The Galaxy A22 does provide a compelling package at this price point. What the HD Plus display lacks in sharpness, it makes up for in colour and vibrancy. The camera setup is among the best in the segment and produces some remarkable shots. And OIS at this price point is commendable. Samsung's software package remains very polished and even Battlegrounds Mobile India runs smoothly for the odd bit of gaming. The phone is available for Rs 18,499. So that was all about the Galaxy A22, but of course the other big news in tech this week has been about the Pegasus Surveillance Rao. Now have you ever wondered, how can you exactly tell if your phone has been hacked by spyware or adware? In this video, we'll tell you exactly how. The Pegasus snooping row has again thrown into spotlight the issue of how safe our phones are. While most people do not need to worry about Pegasus, there are several other hacking and spying software and apps that you need to be cautious of. While some apps try to access financial information from your phone like bank account details or passwords, others can take complete control over your phone including photo gallery, calls, messages and more. But there are signs you can look for which tell you if your phone has been hacked. If your phone's battery is draining faster than usual, malware and fraudulent apps may be using malicious code that tends to drain a lot of power. But before we scare you, check the number of apps running in the background. First close them and then monitor your phone again. Your phone may be vulnerable to hacks if you notice apps on your smartphone that you are sure you didn't download. Keep an eye out if you find your smartphone is acting weird. Apps crashing unexpectedly or failing to load may be a sign of a hack. Many sites may look different than they usually do and this could be a telltale sign. If you notice a lot of inappropriate or X-rated advertisements as pop-ups on your phone, it could suggest that your phone has been compromised. Pop-ups may be due to adware, a type of malicious software that inundates your device with ads. Remember to never click on such links. The flashlight turning on even when you are not using your phone is another sign to look out for. This may be because your device is being remotely controlled. Phones can heat up during prolonged periods of use like gaming for hours or running navigation apps etc. But if your phone is getting very hot even when you don't use it, there is some cause for worry. You must watch out for texts or calls in your log that were not sent to you or sent by you. If you notice gibberish and unusual characters here, it could be a sign that a hacker could be accessing your device. If your data bill is higher than usual without you increasing your online activities, it is likely that your phone is hacked and the hacker could be using your phone's data to run apps in the background. 
If there are posts on your social media handles that you haven't made or emails sent from your account that are connected to your phone, it could mean that a hacker has gained access to the device. If your phone is hanging more often, or the screen is freezing too many times, or your phone is rebooting unexpectedly, it could be a sign of a hacked device.